Good evening, fans. Welcome to BMC Durfee High School's Mac Aldridge Field for girls' big three soccer between the visiting Brockton Boxers and your Durfee Hilltoppers. We're pleased to welcome you this evening to Durfee. Good sportsmanship is one of the primary goals of interscholastic athletic programs. Our student athletes recognize that judgment calls are made in good faith and that they must abide by the decisions of the officials. Spectators can support their interscholastic program by refraining from derogatory remarks or cheers. We hope that you will enjoy the game and that you will support all participants in a positive, sportsmanlike manner. Let's meet the starting lineups. For the Lady Boxers, number one, a sophomore, Jayla Smith. Number three, a freshman, Lena Marion. Number four, a sophomore, Alicia Tockman. Number five, a senior, Kyla Cullors. Number seven, a sophomore, Jayla Corinne Stewart. Number 10, a junior, Kayla Murphy. Number 11, a junior, Danielle Davids. Number 13, freshman, Vanessa Dos Anjos. Number 17, a junior, Olivia Mathalier. Number 18, a senior in goal, Tori Viola Lari. And number 22, Captain Junior Madison Hendrigan. The Lady Boxers are coached by Denise Glenn and assisted by, I'm sorry, an athletic director, Kevin Caro for the Boxers. And now for your Durfee Lady Hilltoppers. Number seven, a junior, Trinity Afonso. Number 10, Captain Junior Jasmine Montega. Number 11, a Senior Captain Mallory Forcier. Number 12, a Junior Hannah Alexander. Number 13, Freshman Charlotte Misterato. Number 15, a Junior Kelsey Whitney. Number 17, a sophomore, Catherine Callahan. Number 19, a junior captain, Madison Bullier. Number 20, senior, Brittany Pavo. Number 22, sophomore, Samantha Soares. And in goal for the Hilltoppers, number 99, senior captain, Shaylin Carrero. The Hilltoppers are coached by Vanessa D'Souza, assisted by Owen McGonigal, Crystal Bradham, and Kayla Mendez. At this time, we ask that you please rise and remove your caps as we play the national anthem.
Okay, sports fans, opening ceremonies are in the books. Evan Massoud with you here on Fred TV for Big Three Girls Soccer. Just saw the starting 11 for both sides. Should be a great game, and I'll tell you, this a lot riding on this. In fact, both coaches uh, stress that this is basically a make-or-break season because both teams are under 500, and um, so they need this one. They need this one bad. So uh, here's how it's all coming down. Uh, New Bedford beat Brockton last week, handed Brockton their first big three loss because the box has already beat Durfee once this season. It was a 4 nothing loss on the road. So New Bedford basically did Durfee a favor. So both teams 2-1 and one in the big three. Whoever wins this one will be the big three champs. Now, the one good thing is there is a safety net. Should these teams tie which neither wants a tie. They want to knock out the other. But if they do tie, both will get in as co-Big 3 champs and therefore both will earn a spot in the state tournament. But both are looking for the win in the outright championship. Brockton with just three wins. Durfee with five. And uh, so it should be this, this should be a fun game. Two different teams from when they were uh, when they faced each other earlier in the season. Coach Glennon with Brockton was telling me before the game that, you know, she, you just can't you can't look back at that game and say, well, we're going to shut out Durfee again because uh, two totally different teams here for both sides as you get down the stretch. Things happen. You make changes. Uh, maybe players go down. You, whatever. There's a number of variables. You get this late in the season, things change. An opportunity for Durfee early. The Hilltoppers backed off of it um, as the goalkeeper for Brockton there, uh, Lowry, came out, and I'm a little surprised, actually, maybe a little bit of hesitancy, and that kind of goes against what Coach D'Souza was telling me they worked on in practice, and that was sp uh, more speed on the outside, so they're, they're adjusting the wings a little bit, and then to have more aggression, play with more aggression. So I'm actually surprised to see them back off there um, to start this game. Really, it was a one-on-one -on -one with the goalie. We get kicked out. And it will be thrown in. So now we're going to have a uh, goal kick here. So when I do stand corrected, by the way, uh, these you know I gotta say the jerseys messing me up. But Brockton's wearing black with red, which is <laughs> very similar to Durfee. Durfee's in the white, so um, that was actually Carrero who made the play, which is why there was no aggression there. I'm thinking uh, thinking backwards here, so uh, forgive me there. Early game jitters, I guess we'll say. But um, needless to say. Needless to say, uh, Carrero made the play there easily, had the defender there. There's a shot towards the net wide to the right. Uh, I had the chance to see this uh, Brockton team uh, basically a week ago um, against uh, Dartmouth. Um, as If you've seen any of our broadcasts before, uh, you know I've mentioned that I, I do do some games for Dartmouth Cable on the side, uh, maybe a handful per season, and... Um, so we did uh, a Saturday game. It was that rainy Saturday about a week and a half ago, and um, Brockton was at Dartmouth. They were short players in that game. Um, it, it was the conditions were just awful. Of course, Dartmouth Memorial Stadium does not have this fantastic field turf. They have a combination of sod and mud. And um, it, Brockton showed some incredible resiliency in that game, uh, a game that... Dartmouth pretty much had wrapped up, and uh, their freshman, their freshman uh, starter here, number three, Lena Marion, actually put in all three goals for Brockton, and one came in stoppage time with literally seconds to play in the game. They ended that game with a tie, and um, so I'm very impressed uh, with how Brockton played in that game, uh, given all the scenarios that they were dealing with, weather, again, short short players on a Saturday morning game. It, it was, they had everything against them, and uh, to force a tie was quite impressive. 
They do have some good speed. Nice stop there. Uh, it does go out, however. That's number uh, 13 there, Dos Anjos. That one gets through, and uh, quick turnaround here from the box is going to move it towards the circle. Heading back down Durfee's zone, uh, Afonso trying to clear it out. Soft kick, got it to her teammate. Now uh, we'll see Catherine Callahan in the circle, going to forge it ahead. That's played, oh, they call it off sides, very close, but uh, Samantha Soros getting the bad news. Of course, later this week is uh, senior night here for uh, for the Durfee girls as well. So we're going to have uh, kind of a double hit here of girls soccer this week. The tournament pairings, um, should the girls and the boys get in for uh, soccer, um, of course the boys on the road now uh, in Brockton, should both teams make it, tournament pairings come out middle of next week for soccer. Volleyball did qualify yesterday after uh, coming back down two sets to none. They rallied, took the final three, and uh, the rest was history. So Coach Kelly Bullier and her Lady Hilltoppers in girls volleyball will play in the tournament. And um, they're right about 500 with the record. So uh, they'll, they'll be probably... I don't think we'll get a, uh, a, home, a home match here for volleyball. Carrero makes a nice play there on the one hopper. Um, my guess is uh, with a 500 record, probably going to be in the second half of the bracket. Towards not at the very bottom, but probably past the halfway mark. So probably in the bottom half of the bracket. Um, but those pairings, I know those come out uh, next week as well. We have football Friday. Framingham's coming to town for, for Durfee uh, to host the non-playoff game. Diamond will be on the road at Mashpee. We wish the Bengals and uh, former Hilltopper coach Steve Winarski all the luck. Um, Mashpee is 7-0 and on the season. Number one seed, Dar uh, Diamond rather, 4-2. and um, That fourth win came on a forfeit because Conley had to forfeit the game uh, last week against Diamond. And uh, it was in the papers today that they are suspending um, the team and hoping that they can get it together for Thanksgiving so they can at least play on uh, in the rivalry game on Thanksgiving. But from what I'm understanding, not enough players on the team to really have a game. I think only about a Baker's dozen. You have 11 on the, t on the field. So um, tough go of it for Conley this season, which is really what forced the uh, forfeiter. And uh, so Diamond got that fourth win. They honestly... Um, they looked really good against Tri County, so you got to play the game. But Diamond definitely would have been the favorite there against Conley, who hadn't won a game. Uh, but they got the easy pass. So sometimes that can hurt you, sometimes that can break you when you have to uh, wait an extra week to play, uh, especially when you're going to go up against a seven and zero team. Mashpee's always good. I, I I don't know what goes on down in the Cape, but I'll tell you they they have some pretty good uh, football programs down the Cape. Uh, Mashpee being one, Barnstable always uh, a perennial contender, and uh, they have some good stuff. Nosset for a long time. I uh, think they, they had some struggles in recent years when they played us, but uh, prior to that, very strong team. So that was kicked out. Probably just a safety move there to kick it on the sidelines, force a throw in. You may notice we're a little lower of an angle tonight, and that is because uh, we have, first of all, quite a quite a lot of wind, which we're not afraid of, but uh, some pretty heavy rain on our on its way. Carrero going to come out. Loose ball, and she has to backtrack, and she makes the play. That was very dangerous there. Carrero is an aggressive goalie, been doing it a long time, has had a great high school career. Um, she's not afraid to play aggressive and come out for a ball, but, uh, you know, sometimes that, that risk, you don't always get the reward. Luckily, that time didn't come back to bite her. Yeah. 
Little bouncer off the head, still loose in front. Hilltoppers trying to grab the early lead. This is one of those games that's scoring first. Just barely, just barely out of the out of the net. Top right corner and it missed. But this is one of those that I think scoring first is going to prove big for uh, for either side. Waiting on the goal kick. Here it comes. On the far sideline, moving the ball around. Hilltoppers defenders sending it back towards the circle. Uh, so basically, yeah, what I've seen, quite a bit of rain, though, uh, is expected uh, for the next basically 36 hours. It's going to be kind of yucky weather here in New England. Uh, so we're taking the precautions. Figured rather than having to move down at, at the half, should the skies open up, we'll just sit inside. Got the windows open, still got the fresh air. Can't complain. It's actually warm. I mean, here we are, October 24th, and I'm in shorts <laughs> for a 6 o'clock game, and I can assure you that I wouldn't be cold if we were standing outside either. It's it's amazing. It's 70 degrees right now, and we're uh, just starting the game here, a 6 o'clock start. So this is just it's amazing. We've, we've really had a good fall. We've been very lucky. Opportunity for Brockton, taking a shot. It'll go wide to the right, and hit off the side of the netting. Durfee boys had a big win uh, yesterday here at home. 5 nothing win against Old Rochester. Took a bite out of the Bulldogs with the shutout. And uh, so again, tonight's game for them out in Brockton, very important as well. Uh, with the you know, when you have the ties, you have to factor in like kind of a point system. You can't just go off of wins and losses and uh, winning percentage. So the the ties come into play, and uh, the boys, Durfee boys, definitely need a, a win as well to get into the tournament. Need out of play by that was number one there, Jayla Smith, and so now we'll have. Hannah Alexander t throw it in. I was very impressed with her throwing game uh, the last time we did a game. That was the New Bedford game. And uh, impressed there. Again, she really gets good distance and good loft on the ball, which allows it to be played off the head as well. Look at that. Beautiful throw. Coming back towards the sidelines, though. There was uh, Kyla Colors goes out of play. Brockton will have this one. And it'll be uh, Corinne Stewart doing the honors. Bouncer, and it falls inbounds, and now we'll bounce out of bounds. Wind will be a factor, though. It's kind of blowing across the field from the field house diagonally to the right, across towards the baseball field, like past us to the left here. So from, say, far right to near left on your screen. So uh, anything kicked in the air, both coaches want their players to try to keep the ball on the ground as best they can, you know, past the feet and... Uh, you know, control it. Keep it. Keep it out of the air, and um, the wind could could have an effect on the ball. Easily, easily have had some gusts uh, close to forty miles an hour, wi without a doubt. And uh, so that that'll definitely play with the ball just a little bit. A throw in on the far side, good 15-yard uh, throw or so. That goes out, and Brockton will turn around. Going to wait for a couple subs here. Actually, just one. Uh, it's going to be number 13, uh, Dos Anjos. She's coming back in. And Alicia Tockman will take a seat. Turning it back around. Waited for the official call because uh, both players seem to be a little confused. Durfee gets, 
Gets a free kick here. We heard the whistle. Nice line drive towards the box. Loose ball, and it is cleared away. Down the sidelines, it's going to roll, and it's still in play, still in play. Whistle, well, that was a borderline call there. Right on the line, and uh, Lena Marion gets the bad news. Alexander got a good running start. Still gets, again, like 20 yards on the throw. Very good. Very strong throwing. We have a free kick here. Uh, Matt Thalier gets a running start here. Good kick. That'll bounce once, twice, maybe three times there to Carrero. I want to remind everyone that, uh, amazingly, we are less than a month away from Thanksgiving Day football. We will have the game live here on Fred TV in the morning, of course. So don't miss it. Channel 9 here in Fall River, anywhere else, fredtv.us. Just click live right on the home page, and you will be able to watch it anywhere that you don't have a TV. 10-15 kickoff. Of course, we'll have a uh, pregame going on about 20 minutes or so before the game. So, uh, you know, switch on over around quarter to 10, and um, we will have all the coverage for you live from Mac Aldrich Field. Really looking forward to it. Always a lot of fun. Of course, uh, the expectations will be very high because Hilltoppers haven't won on this field on Thanksgiving in 10 years. Um they did win last year at New Bedford, but they have not won in front of the home crowd in, in 10 years. In fact, the last time that we were here, uh, it was it was a pretty ugly loss on Thanksgiving. So we turn the page, and uh, while expectations will be high, it's a different team, and uh, all the Hilltopper faithful will have their fingers crossed for an, another good Thanksgiving Day performance. We have three more weeks of football before then, though. Again, Framingham coming in this week. And uh, basically we wait on a week-to-week -week basis to see uh, where we're going to be in the non-playoff bracket, the way it works. So uh, we're hoping for one more home game, but uh, there's honestly no guarantee after, after this week, which is week eight, uh, whether we'll get one for nine or ten. Short throw and uh, ends up coming right back to Dos Anjos. I'm sorry, that was Corinne Stewart, rather. Um, and then she's able to play it ahead. Good pass down the sidelines to Marion. And Marion, again, has impressed as a freshman for this team. Going out on the goal line, and it will be a corner kick for the boxers. You can tell the wind... Uh, when these flags get knocked over, I mean, they're not the heaviest of weights that they're on, but it takes a lot for them to, <laughs> to knock over. And uh, they're laying on the ground right now. Good, solid kick. Carrero goes up the ladder. It's still loose. Cleared out by Durfee. She could not come down cleanly with it. And luckily, there are about three Hilltoppers right inside the net for the denial. No foul, but we will have another corner kick. I believe that's Kayla Murphy, their number 10. So Carrera will be tested again here. Get close to the halfway mark in the first half. Now she gets the A-OK. -okay. It's another good kick there, good floater. The wind slowing it down though. It went uh, towards the outside of the box, towards the middle of the field. Out of play it'll go. Durfee will throw in. We are basically at the halfway mark here. So Evan Massoud with you on Fred TV. Big three girls soccer, Durfee and Brockton. We are scoreless here, 20 minutes in. Glad you're with us. And as strange as it is, and as much as we love the natural sun, you know, you got the 
All artificial light now once you get towards the, eight of, the uh, end of October. We started in the dark basically here. We have a free kick here for uh, Jasmine Montega. They called the foul. I didn't honestly see really any pushing or shoving or any any infraction, but uh, Hilltoppers will take it. Little floater towards the front of the box. Loose ball, still loose ball. Cleared out by the boxers. Lowry was there for the stop. Coming back again, she goes down and makes a nice catch. So both goalies tested here in the last 60 seconds. And I'd say uh, Lowry tested even more so. Good strong goal kick too, landing at the at the 50 there, right at the middle of the field. Lobbed back over to the offensive attack. Soar is trying to get by, can't turn it around, goes out of play. Another one lobbed towards the net, played in the air. Coming to the sidelines and it's just a little too strong. Not sure if that was by design. Lowry was looking this way the whole time, so it's very possible, but if it was, it definitely uh, was a little too strong. Her teammate could not get there. She let her a little too far. Again, loose in front. Hilltoppers putting some pressure on, although uh, Pavo ran past the ball there. Durfee still has it. Definitely have had some chances. Clear it out, coming back out of play again, and uh, Hannah will throw in again. Sends it back to Hannah, now lobbing it. Ball still in play, cleared out by the boxers. And back to Montega, sent back the other direction again. And on the ground there, uh, Tockman sending it towards the middle, now back again. Back and forth we go, trading possessions here. All ball there, no foul. Bouncer and Corinne Stewart will throw it in. Quick sub as well, uh, snuck in there. Serena De Silva coming in for Olivia Shaw, number two. So Coach Glennon gets a sub in there and now we'll have the throw in. That was close to handball, actually, for uh, Bullier. Had her arms crossed, and it seemed to come down right on her arms. Typically, that'll get called, but there were three players in front of her, between her and the ref, so uh, probably didn't see it. Now the whistle is blown, and we're going to get a free kick for the Hilltoppers as Trinity Afonso will kick it away. going all the way to the far side and it's Forcier kicking it off of her opponent came right back at her out of play now we'll throw in nice job getting it over the defenders it's still going in Durfee's uh, in a favorable direction for the Hilltoppers Brockton clearing it out that time now, right to midfield. No whistles. Coach Glennon's not happy about that. Coming back, Lowry makes the scoop.
And then that kick sent right towards uh, midfield as opposed to the sideline kick last time. Jarred loose, quickly taken back by Brockton. Bad pass there though. Nice block for the boxers, that was Mathalier. Rubbing shoulders and elbows, fighting for the ball. Hilltoppers forging ahead, passing it towards right in front, actually played by Lowry. Nice job there, good hustle, good battle. Lowry's had a lot of goal kicks here in the first half. Now a quick transition for Brockton, moving into the offensive zone. Carrero down to the knees. She makes the play. Good strong kick for her. Lands in front of Pavo. Corinne Stewart looking for a way around. She gets it past. Soars, turning it around, finds a defender. That was uh, Jayla Smith. On the ground, Pavo can't get there. Smith backtracking, Corinne Stewart with it. To her teammate, Marion, it goes out of play. Brockton has it. See, right on, just on that throw in, you could see the ball kind of curl in the air. So the wind is uh, definitely gusting quite well out on the field in the flat land. Free kick for the Hilltoppers. A little over 10 minutes left here uh, in regulation for the first half. Good strong kick, but it's blocked. Turned around again. There's a whistle on the far side. It'll be a free kick in the box. They actually having occurred in the box should be a penalty kick. It'll be a straight out penalty kick when it's in the box. See where they have the ball spotted. Gotta say, it's after all, after these years of uh, 10 years of this field, it's actually pretty difficult to see the yellow, <laughs> the yellow markings. They've pretty much worn out the soccer markings they have. Ball rolling, look at that. You can tell again, there's, there's a pure example that the ball won't even stay in place. Great opportunity for the Hilltoppers. Blocked by the wall. Got to stay with it back towards the net wide to the left. So no go for the Hilltoppers that time. And a timeout called by Brockton with basically 10 minutes to play here in the first half. Again, we'll probably have a little bit of stoppage time, but for the most part, uh, pretty quick moving half. No no major delays or anything, which is great. We've done some games in the past where we've had almost a, almost five or six minutes of stoppage time, and that, that's a lot.
Both teams break the huddles here after the timeout. And it'll be a goal kick for Brockton. We resume play. Oh, ground ball, not much elevation there. Of course, again, tougher to get the elevation when it's not a drop kick, you're playing it on the ground. Andrea Amaral just into the game. Can't get there in time. No whistles there either. Montega. Montega with a good pass there. Pavo trying to get the ball back. A whistle. And it's going Brockton's way. There was contact from both sides right there. The official didn't like it. Kelsey Whitney loses it. Boxers on the attack here, biding their time. Pass towards the front of the box. Cleared away towards midfield. Mathalier goes right through three hilltoppers to the corner and out on the goal line. It should be a goal kick. Goes out, down the sidelines, and Hilltoppers will throw in. Oh, quick, quick lobber there from uh, Marion. Move the ball down. She doesn't wait around. She just gets it and throws. And that time maybe a little too quickly because the Hilltoppers were able to get it. Montega could not turn it around. Out of play it goes, and Brockton not able to keep it in. Alexander throws it in. Pavo working the sidelines, and it goes out. I'll tell you one thing, the uh, the benches for, for Durfee are much, a little closer to... Uh, the boundaries, they're not as close to the track, and the girls, Durfee girls are standing. There's almost no room on the sideline there between the benches and the uh, between the benches and the field, so that can make it a little more difficult to play the sidelines, too. You get bunched up, and then you have people breathing down your neck, standing right there. Good pass ahead to Pavo. Full sprint. Can't keep it in again. Good effort, though, from Pavo. That is falling, falling, and out of bounds. Brockton throws in. There was contact. Durfee gets the ball. Montego with another sh another shot. She's about a handful of these free kicks. Great kick, headed by the boxers. Now Hilton was trying to drop it down. Amaral could not get it down, and the boxers moving it along. Pass back. Amaral missed it through the legs of uh, Marion, and now she'll throw in. No, nope, she'll give it to Cor Corinne Stewart, who will throw in for Brockton.
Crowd getting a little restless here. Acting as the assistant coach. Everybody bunched up. No separation, but now possibly some. Uh, Jensen Riley trying to get it past uh, Mathalier. Could not. Back on the ground. This time he gets through. Pavo redirects, trying to get around Corinne Stewart. She lost it. She let herself too much. Mathalier, a wall yet again. She's blocked a number of kicks. There's a push. A little body check there, draws the free kick for the boxers. And Mathalier will kick it away. Good strong kick, landing right inside the circle. Carrero comes way out to gather it. Another good, strong kick. There's Brockton defense here. The three three girls playing back there have been outstanding in this first half. The Hilltoppers have had some chances to get through, and any, any little bit of room that they get, it's quickly gobbled up. And back, oh, collision there. Who's this going to be against? Hilltoppers will get the free kick. That's a good spot for a free kick as well. Montega have to hopefully get it over the line there. Towards the net wide to the right. No good. Final two minutes here, basically, or three minutes of the first half. Again, before we go into any stoppage time and the clock stops. Relatively quick first half. Topper throw in from the far side. And again, there was a loose ball, two Hilltoppers there, and then all of a sudden, Mathalier there to clear it out. So this Brockton defense has been uh, quite good. The plus side is that uh, the Hilltoppers haven't had to play much defense, so sooner or later, these opportunities, these shots that they're taking, um, you know, they're going to result in, in a goal. I mean, it's just the way it is. The more and more you take a shot on net, sooner or later one of them's going to go in, or the more chances you get, one of those chances are going to turn into points. So keep the pressure on. We've definitely seen more play down this right side than we have down the left side of the field. That's going to go out of play. Hilltoppers will throw in from a pretty good spot. That goes out. Oh, it's going to be a throw in. Very close, but it does go out on the side. Hilltoppers can't catch a break there. Maybe the wind kicked it out a little bit. Who knows? But a throw in. Almost as good as a kick. 
lobbed and out on the goal line. Rolling, 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 out of play. And as Alexander gets ready to throw, the clock stops, and now we are in stoppage time. Brockton will throw in this time. That that last throw in there, Alexander looked to have rushed it just a bit and uh, didn't let anybody really get set. And one of the boxers just came right in and cut it off. Now down the sidelines, rolling and out of play. El Toppers will throw in. We'll go back the other direction again. Soars off the head. Pavo there, full sprint, trying to get through, and it is cleared out by, that was number seven, Corinne Stewart. Brockton ball now. Kayla Murphy sending it down the far side there. And Afonso towards the middle, and that's the first half. Again, very little stoppage time, maybe 60 seconds, if that. And uh, after one half of play here at Durfee, we're still in a stalemate, nothing, nothing the score. And the Hilltoppers uh, with some really good chances, more so than Brockton. Uh, the offense kept the pressure on the defense. The boxers D, though, had the answer, so... Uh, we'll see what happens in the second half. See if Durfee can keep wearing down the boxers. Can't maintain it forever. Second half next on Fred TV. We are back at Durfee High School. Second half about to begin here. Hilltoppers hosting the Brockton Boxers for the finale of Big Three play. Winner takes all. A tie would be a shared crown, but the winner would eliminate the other, basically. They both are two and one here in the big three. We are still scoreless as well. So uh, a scoreless first half. Again, uh, you know, the Hilltoppers looked good offensively. They seem to have, uh, seem to control more of the pace of the game than, than Brockton did. Brockton had a few chances, a couple corner kicks, um, but m more of the play was in Brockton's defensive zone, so We'll see if any uh, adjustments are made by Brockton to get the ball ahead to the to the offense, to the forwards, or if the Hilltoppers uh, you know, can find a way to solve the Brockton defense. That's a whole other story here. It's in front, and uh, Samantha Soares went down, otherwise she would have been there to help out. Talkman cleared it out there, sent it towards middle of the field. Nice turnaround by Callahan, and now a whistle. It'll be a free kick for the boxers. A little grounder from Matt Delier, cut off by Pavo. Soares takes it off the face, it'll bounce once. Twice before Tockman gets there, now sending it back the other direction. Afonso trying to clear it out, gets it to Callahan. Out of play it goes, Forcier can't get there in time. Cut off, and we'll do it again. That was uh, Callahan cutting it off. Nice boot there to clear it out. Soares can't get there again in time. It gets cut off. A 
Liner gonna play it on sides, they do. Sent towards the sidelines and it'll go out of play. Hilltoppers will throw in. Kelsey Whitney going to Pavo down in the corner. It's kicked out on the goal line. It'll be a corner kick for the Hilltoppers here. Jasmine Montega sets the ball. Good strong kick, but it's going wide to the right. Loose in front, can't put it in. That was uh, Whitney, it looked like there. It was, she sent it up. And now it's being turned around and uh, that is Corinne Stewart on the far side working it back down the field here. Boxer is able to move it right down into Durfee territory before it gets cleared and sent back towards the circle. Stopped and taken away. And it'll go out of play. Thursday's game, uh, the senior day game, it is a day game. It's a, f well, we say day game. It's a four o'clock start, afternoon start, not so much, a, not a night game like this. Um, so it'll be half natural light, half artificial. Pavo will not get there in time. And it'll go out of play. Waiting for a ball here, nobody uh, nearby, and there we go, finally get one. Uh, Danielle Davids throwing it in, number 11. And just like that, Durfee gets it back. Hilltoppers will throw in now in front of their own bench. And we'll do it again, same spot as uh, Mathalier had kicked it on the Kicked it on the throw, and that is a good throw down the sidelines. Pavo forges ahead, has some control, but it's going to go out. Can't run it down. She kicked it a little too far, couldn't recover. And uh, Lowry will get herself a goal kick here. Goal kick coming to the sidelines. It bounces off of, that should be Durfee Ball. Went off of Tockman's head, and it is going to be Durfee Ball. Whitney throwing it in. That is going to go out on the goal line. Nobody was there. Another goal kick for Lowry coming. On the ground. Montega, nice stop there. Good feet ahead, it's off the head. Now Pavo coming to get it, has to settle it, can't. Still in play and it goes out of bounds. And a little bit of frustration there, she slaps the arms down. That was one of her better, better chances there. And now uh, we're gonna see Lowry go to the other side of the field to kick this one. Maybe trying to get it away from Pavo. Change things up a bit. That's sent back towards the box as well. Soares chasing it down, still in play. Hooks it back towards the box and Pavo didn't break forward, might have had a chance. I don't think she was expecting it. Lowry rolls it ahead. Good block by uh, Forcier. Out of play, towards the bench, Jerfy will throw in. Uh, 
going to be Brockton Ball. Free kick. Nice strong kick down the sidelines, out of play. Durfee will throw in. Seen a lot of balls come out of bounds here on this near side here in the second half. And there's yet another. <laughs> you can't seem to get any uh, separation, get anybody to get the ball to the middle of the field, spread out a bit here. Everybody's just bunched up waiting for throw-ins. Montega goes down. Retying the sh the uh, the shoes there might have uh, tripped on a lace. Could roll an ankle that way. Ten minutes gone here in this second half. We're still scoreless. This is one of those games that you almost have a feeling at at this point that uh, first goal is going to end up being the winning goal. Whoever breaks through, should that happen. Whitney throws it in. Who wants it? They're making decisions here, and Hilltoppers toss it towards the net. No good. Almost like doing a little too much communicating there. Kind of slowed things up. Jeffrey still with possession as Whitney will throw in. Headed straight up, Pavo. With pressure, there's force here turning it around. Whitney coming back, she loses it. It's pushed, there's no whistle. Shot on net, wide to the left. Just a couple inches. Lowry will kick it away yet again. Stopped by uh, Montega off the head. Getting in the way, Callahan blocking with the body. Hilltoppers keeping it in the offensive zone here in the attack. Shot on net again, wide to the right. So that's the other thing is while the Hilltoppers have had a lot of shots, a lot of them have gone just wide or just uh, just to the left, just to the right. Haven't necessarily been dead on. I mean, Lowry's been busy, no doubt. She's had to make some plays, but uh, there were a lot of shots on net that haven't been really right to the net. They've gone out of bounds. Now the boxers into Durfee territory. And quickly turned around, out of play by uh, Whitney there. Brockton will throw in, but she stopped that. Stopped that rally there, basically dead in its tracks. And now Callahan cleared it out for the moment. Turned back around. Callahan again. And now a whistle, too. So the boxer's going to get a free kick here from a very good spot. And the wind is whipping. Towards the net, Carrero makes the play. That's a big one right there. Right into the gloves. And she'll send it. Deep kick, wow. Well past midfield. I think the wind helped out there just a little bit. Great drop kick. It does go out of play, but Brockton throwing in from 
deep in their own territory. Callahan could not get there in enough time to take a shot on net. Brockton getting another free kick. Carrero scoops a little grounder. Have to kick it away again. Another really strong kick. Rockton will throw in. Quero comes back out, so now she's been busy. Brockton putting on a little pressure here. That one a shorter kick, gonna bounce it right at the 50. Pavo. Gonna try to turn it around, she slips, can't get back up in time. Turns it around the other direction. Has a little bit of help from Montega, she couldn't settle it either. Pavo goes down. Tell you there, uh, Davids, she is tough. She has a lot of speed. And Pavo, Pavo's fast too, but she can't seem to get by. Free kick coming here. Oh, I'm sorry, we've got a sub subs coming in. My bad. We'll see, uh, Samantha Sore is going to take a break. She gets subbed out. And then we have the throw in. And again, look at David's right there to take it away. Out of play, should be a corner kick for the Hilltoppers. Comes the kick towards the net. Still in play. Coming back. Out of play again. It should be another corner kick. And it will. That's a good kick too. In front and it's just wide. It goes out of play. How close you gonna get? How many times? Very strangely enough, you probably hear the crowd, there's some Brockton fans sitting here right in the middle of the Durfee fans, which is just rather odd. Uh, <laughs> nobody on the other side uh, of the bleachers at all, um, on the away bleachers, but I mean, to have Brockton fans right in the middle of this main section with the Durfee fans is just very, very strange. Not commonplace, that's for sure. Topper's got to clear it out here. Whitney giving chase. It'll go out. Brockton will keep it. They'll throw in. <laughs> David sends it back to uh, Smith. Towards the net again, Carrero swats it out. Great play from Shaylin Carrero.
Hilltoppers and Boxes on the far side. Brockton will throw in. He has an opportunity, foot race to the ball. Lowry is gonna clear it out. Pavo just a foot short, basically, in terms of the, her stride. One stride short. Coming back towards the sidelines, out of play. Should be Durfee ball. Little extra right there, and uh, the official gonna have a quick word with Dos Anjos. And now Coach Glennon. Talking to the ref as well. And now Dos Anjos will come out. Questionable uh, out of bounds call there. A couple of Hilltoppers thought it should go their way. It should sure look like it was going to go their way. It's a free kick instead. Actually, it wasn't an out of bounds call. That was it was a foul called. Out of play. Durfee throws. Halfway through the second half, still no score from Durfee High School as the Brockton Boxers and Jeffrey Hilltoppers square off in the final big three girls soccer game of the season. Winner will be big three champs and they're in a playoff spot. Loser goes home. If there's a tie, it'll be a shared crown. Hilltoppers, I guess that kick came out of bounds, so Durfee gonna throw in from about, about the 20 yard line here. That's gonna be uh, Kelsey Whitney. Pavo doing her darndest, and it's blocked by Lowry. The second effort is also blocked. Unreal. Durfee's best scoring opportunity of the night right there. Could not get it in the back of the net. Nice job to keep it in play there. Uh, Tachman had pressure and was able to turn it around. Forcier was on her heels. Whitney sending it to the far side. Boxers play it back, try to reset out of play. And the boxers will throw it in. We'll say, I know we took the precautionary measures in case it rained, but we're luckily it hasn't rained at all. We've been, uh, we've stayed dry the whole game here. I'll tell you, if it had rained as well, between that and the wind, it would have been pretty tough. The wind is making it difficult enough. So uh, glad that it has not rained. Down the sidelines. Boxers kick it out. Oh, it's still in play, actually. Wow, I thought it went out. Let me do a few ball, though. I thought it was initially out. We've got a couple more yards back the other direction. And a free kick coming here from the 30. As the wind howls, another big gust. Kicking with the wind, this could help. Right in front, and it was misplayed. 
off the side of the foot. Samantha Soares back into the game for Durfee, number 22. And wait a goal kick here from the boxers. Catherine Noguera coming out, number 18, as Soares goes back into the game. Gonna go out of play. Brockton will throw in from good field position. Let's go, Jeffrey, stop him. Not quite cleared out enough. Soares turns it around right to Davids. Two on one, and it can't get through. Mathalier denying any entry there. Madison Bullier with the feed down, and it's blocked again, sent back. This is what I'm talking about. Brock Brockton's defense really has been outstanding. Anytime the Hilltoppers get some kind of a chance or a break, here's an opportunity for the boxers. Carrero coming out, goes out on the goal line. It'll be a goal kick. Durfee will get possession here. But any opportunities the Hilltoppers have gotten to try to get a break or get by, it's just quickly snuffed up. Alfonso from the box. Soars, the feet ahead to Pavel, it's played onside. Pavel loses it. Gonna be a close play again. Lowry takes care of it again. Makes the stop. No whistles, man. That wasn't just all ball right there. Officiating has been uh, a little bit inconsistent. Trying to figure out what is a foul and what isn't tonight. There was definitely contact there. Hilltoppers throw in. Out of play. And they earn a free kick. It'll be Mallory Forcier. Nice strong kick right towards the middle of the field. Whitney breaking through the pile there. Soares has it now, trying to, can't turn in again. It's taken away. It's a nice pass, but not good enough. It took, some, took a funny bounce there. It's gonna roll towards the sidelines. Kept in play by Tockman. And now we'll clear it out. Hilltopper send it back down. Pavo, it's still in play, and she didn't think it was, I don't think. She goes down all the way to the sidelines it goes out of play. Jesus, Ten minutes left in regulation. Big three soccer, scoreless game.
Down the field again, a foot race to the ball. Lowry coming out of the box. She kicks it out of play. Nice safe play there. Durfield throw in from good position. Whitney with the throw in. Hooked back, out of play. Another throw in for, uh, for Durfee. <laughs> Sent in front. And the boxes clear it out. Afonso takes it away. Turning it back around the other direction. And Lowry makes the play. Callahan makes the stop. Knocking down her uh, opponent there. And again, Coach Glennon looking for a foul. Hands were up in the air, no whistles. Definitely playing physical. This has been a uh, pretty intense game. Whitney will throw in. And it's good, again, as good as Durfee's offense has been at putting pressure, the Broxers' defense has been just as good. Being able to basically put out any threat. Now the throw in for Whitney. And it is cleared out of the box yet again. Bullier cuts in, trying to turn around. Out of play. And actually that was at Montego, it wasn't Bullier. Corinne Stewart out of nowhere from the, from the far side of the field all the way down here to make that, that pass there and break it up. Down inside and off the goal line, out of the goal line. Goal kick. A little over five minutes left to play in regulation. Shot on goal, and Guerrero makes the play. Jerfy faithful coming alive. Trying to rally the team here with uh, little time left. Pavo gonna get it. Going to get a chance to turn it around here. There's nobody on her for the first time. Doesn't take a shot. Waited until there were two boxers there and should have taken a shot earlier. And then no call on a foul on the backside. There was some contact. I don't know how clear cut it was. Out of play. Durfee should be the one throwing in here. Coach Glennon mad at the official again. Now the official going to come over and talk to Coach Glennon here. Very animated right now. Both coaches. The officials basically gave the right act and said one more time and you're out of here. That wasn't the first time that she was confrontational with the official. Everybody knows how big a game this is, but still out of play it goes. And now 
Now the official wants to talk to one of the Hilltoppers. That was Sassaurus. Corinne Stewart has uh, made her way to this side of the field here, and she's the one throwing in. Now Durfee will throw in on this side. Corner kick. Big spot here. Toppers have come very close on some of these free kicks. Can they break through here? That's a great kick. Good floater in front. Nobody home. Boxer's gonna clear it out. Turned around, shot on net, bouncer to Lowry. Back down the field. Whistle is gonna bring it back. The official on the far side. Nice kick down the sidelines. And it'll be turned around by the Hilltoppers. They'll throw in. Can't get by Mathalier. Pull your breaks through. Good pass ahead, nobody home. Pop-up coming to the near side. And it goes out of play. Whitney with some hustle. Throwing it down the sidelines. That was Davids cutting it off. Out of play, Durfee throws in again. Less than two minutes in regulation. And Mathalier clears it out. Afonso back towards the middle of the field. Bullier kicks it ahead. Kind of a lucky bounce there. No foul there. Again, a lot of contact. And now player down for Durfee. Looks like Bullier. Heading it back. Foul down here. So Matt Thalier with another free kick. That's a great kick. Cleaned out, Brockton ball. <laughs> Cleared back to Pavo. Pavo kicked it right to Mathalier. Couldn't get it past. Great feed, best feed, and they call her offsides. Come on, 
We're in stoppage time now. Just a few ticks left. Offsides again. That was borderline. Get out on the side, Brockton will throw it in. Hilltop is kind of standing, watching it bounce. Got to go after it right there. Don't want a chance Brockton sneaking in, taking a shot. Throwing down into the corner. Out of play, and it's off the flag post. It'll be a throw in. Hilltoppers now playing defense, just trying to survive these last couple seconds here. Sent towards the net, it's in the air. Carrero's gotta make the play, and she does. Gotta press here. It's a great kick from Carrero. That's the game. This one will end in a scoreless tie. Unreal, <laughs> the crowd, <laughs> everybody just went silent. I don't think they can believe her. They couldn't, they weren't sure what was going on, but a stalemate from Durfee. Scoreless tie here in big three play. Now the good news is the tie still gives you a share of the big three crown. So Brockton and Durfee share the title here in 2017 with the scoreless tie here at Mac Aldrich Field. Oh, and that means with a playoff, uh, with a league victory, a league championship, a shared title, these two teams will both go into the tournament despite uh, below 500 records. So again, anything but a loss here uh, was really gonna be a win. Um, again, both teams wanted the win instead, but Hey, you know, it's better than a loss. A tie is better than a, better than a loss. Hilltoppers had plenty of chances. I think they outplayed Brockton in this one. Defensively, Brockton was outstanding, but the press that the Hilltoppers had, they just couldn't get it in. Just could not get it in the net. Nothing, nothing. The final score from Durfee High School. Both teams tie for the big three title in girls soccer, heading into the state tournament. Again, seedings for girls soccer will come out uh, next week. We'll have senior night here later this week from Durfee as well. For now, Evan Massoud saying so long from Durfee High School.